Hi ladies, it's Mr. O'Sullivan. Today we're going to be looking at Lesson 6-6. <coughs> it is Tuesday, March 23rd. Just give you the heads up that if you hear any loud background noise because I am in the school building and they're doing instruction outside my classroom. So let's begin with today's lesson. Today's learning target is I can analyze quadrilateral side lengths and angle measures by using the properties of a trapezoid. So we're gonna be learning about one of these odd shapes today called the trapezoid. And it sort of looks like a trap because it sort of makes you fall for things that aren't necessarily true. So just give me the heads up, the trapezoid is sort of like the ugly step sibling or the ugly, ugly, ugly sister. Or just that rude uncle you don't really wanna talk about. So the reason why I'm talking about this is because the trapezoid has some properties that are a little different than the ones we've been looking at. Like angles opposite each other are not congruent unless it's a special type of trapezoid and so forth. Like angles on the same line are actually congruent, like on the base angles. It's a little weird. So the definition of a trapezoid is simply a quadrilateral in which two and only two sides are parallel. The parallel sides are called bases and the non-parallel sides are called the legs. So if you look at this image right here, this would be an example of a leg, and this would be an example of a leg, and then these top and bottom would be our bases. And same here, base, base, leg, leg. An isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid in which the non-parallel sides are congruent. So when we say the non-parallel sides, we mean the sides that if we were to extend lines out of them, they would be congruent to each other. So if I look at this image, I can say that these two sides are congruent. And I can also say that this side is parallel to this side. I can do the exact same here. And if I want, I can even put in that language. Leg, leg, base, base. And then I'll do my legs. Copy, paste, paste. Ooh, that was hard. Okay, now some theorems. If a trapezoid is isosceles, then the base angles are congruent. So if I look at this example of an isosceles trapezoid, I can say my base angles are congruent. And then I can say these two angles are congruent. And I just use my semicircles to denote that. The second theorem, if the base angles of a trapezoid are congruent, then the trapezoid is isosceles. That's a given. A trapezoid isosceles <laughs> That's wrong. A trapezoid is isosceles if and only if the base angles are congruent. If a trapezoid is isosceles, then the diagonals are congruent. If the diagonals are congruent, then the trapezoid is isosceles. And a trapezoid is isosceles if and only if the diagonals are congruent. So it's basically saying, like, if you ever had to do a proof, I'm not going to give you a proof on trapezoids, but if you had to do a proof, you can use that as one of your justifications. So now let's actually find out how the heck to use these. So let's use the properties of the trapezoid to find out some missing angles and missing side lengths. Tomorrow what we'll be doing, well tomorrow is a work day. On Thursday we're actually going to be setting up. And then when we get back from the break we're actually going to learn how to find using the median. Okay. So using the properties of the trapezoid. In the following image, ABCD is an isosceles trapezoid. That's a key piece of information. The word isosceles means I got two congruent sides, and it's my non-parallel sides. And we can sort of tell that it's going to be AD and BC that are congruent to each other. I know that AB is parallel to CD, so we're going to mark that in our image. AB parallel to CD. And look, it also tells you AD is congruent to BC, which we showed. AD congruent to BC. Question number one. If the measure of angle ADC is 110, find the measure of angle BCD and the measure of angle DAB. So what we're going to do is we're going to label ADC as 110 degrees. So I start at A, go to D, end at C. So I'm going to put my 110 right here. So let's put a 110. I'm going to change up the color to green this time. I haven't used green in a while. Okay, so the first angle I want to find is BCD. So I'm going to draw a line at B, go to C and end at D. So I want to find the value of this angle right here. Well, if we look up here, we know that angles that are our base angles are actually congruent to each other. So if this angle right here is 110, what does this angle also have to be? It also has to be 110 degrees. So what I'm going to do is put my 110 in. So I'm going to put my 110 in. So I'm going to say the measure of angle BCD is 110 degrees. Now I need to find the measure of angle DAB. So I start at D, go to A, and end at B. 
So now is where we sort of do something a little nifty, which is what we've done in the past most of the time. I want to find the value of this angle. Well, if you look, I know that angle on the same line are going to add up to 180 degrees. So if I already have 110 degrees, what does this angle have to be? Well, I just do 180 minus 110, which will give me a 70 degree angle. So I know this angle is 70 degrees. Okay, let's go on to some other problems. I think, yeah, now let's do a side length question. Question number two, we have the exact same image, but it's not labeled. We have to label it with our side lengths. Question number two says, if AD is 2Y minus 5 and BC is Y plus 3, find the length of AD. So I'm going to put my 2Y minus 5 and my Y plus 3. Well, we know AD and BC are congruent. So whenever two things are congruent to each other, do we add them up and set equal to 180 or do we set them equal to each other? Very good. We set them equal to each other. So I'm going to do 2Y minus 5 equals Y plus 3. And now that I have this equation, I can solve for y. So I'm going to take away a y from both sides of my equation. So take away y, take away y. What's 2y minus 1y? That's y. So I get y minus 5 equals 3. Now how do I get rid of my minus 5? I add 5 to both sides. So my 5s cancel, and then I get y equals 8. Here's the issue. Is that my final answer? Nope, not my final answer. I want to find the length of AD. So I now have to go to AD and substitute in that 8. So I'm going to do 2 times 8 minus 5. What's 2 times 8? 16. Take away 5. 11. 11 is your final answer. Perfect. Number 3. It goes back to the same visual. I'm going to use pink this time. If the measure of angle DAB is 4x minus 5, so DAB is right here, so this is 4x minus 5. And the measure of angle ABC is 3x plus 15. Find the measure of each angle of the trapezoid. So 3x plus 15. Well, if you remember, we know that our base angles are congruent. So I know 4x minus 5 and 3x plus 15 are equal to each other. So I'm going to set these equations equal to each other and solve for x. So I have 4x minus 5 equals 3x plus 15. i got to solve for x, so I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides of my equation. 4x minus 3x is x, so I get x minus 5 equals 15. Now I'm going to add 5 to both sides, so I get x equals 20. Here's the issue. I want to find the value of the angle, so I'm going to plug it in to each angle. So I go to my 4x minus 5, and I plug in 20. So 4 times 20 minus 5. What's 4 times 20? 80. Take away 5, 75. So here's the thing. If this angle is 75, what does this angle also have to be? I don't even need to plug in. I know my base angles are congruent, so this also has to be 75 degrees. Now, we know that angles on the same line add up to 180. So if I want to find the measure of angle D, I already have a 75 degree angle, so I'm going to do 180 minus 75. What's 180 minus 75? 105. So angle D is 105 degrees. So what does angle C also have to be? 105 as well, because they are congruent. Well, let's go on to the next set of problems. So number four, now we're going to look at our diagonals, I believe. Given trapezoid FEHG, I can look at my image and I can tell it's isosceles because I have my non-parallel sides marked as congruent, FE and GH. So if FH is 5x minus 13 and EG is 4x minus 7, find the length of FH. So if they're congruent, I'm just going to set them equal to each other. So I'm going to do 5x minus 13 equals 4x minus 7. Let's go ahead and solve that equation for x. I'm going to take away 4x from both sides of my equation. So I get x minus 13 equals negative 7. Now I'm going to add 13 to both sides of my equation. Negative 7 plus 13 is, is it 6? Yep, it's 6. So I get x equals 6. Is that my final answer? 
nope, not my final answer. I want to find the value of FH. So I now have to plug in 6 for x. We know FH is 5x minus 13. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to substitute a 6. After typing that in your calculator, what do you get? I get 17. So FH is 17. Okay, final question, and then you work on your delta math. Determine the value of angle R. I have a trapezoid. Are these angles congruent, or are they different? These angles are different. They lie on the same line. They lie on my leg. So if I look at my leg, I need to add them up and set them equal to 180. So I'm going to do 6x minus 22 plus 8x plus 34 equals 180. The first thing I'm going to do is combine my like terms. So 6x and 8x will give me 14x. Negative 22 and 34 will give me, ooh, that's a tough one. I think it's, yeah, I'm right. It's 12. And that's equal to 180. Now we to solve this equation for x. I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides of my equation. We end up getting 14x is equal to 168. And then I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by 14. So I get x is equal to 12. Is that my final answer? Nope, not my final answer. I have to go back to angle r and plug in. So please go to angle r and plug in 12 for x. So we know angle r is 8x plus 34. We know x is 12. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put a 12. And I'm just going to type this into my calculator. And I get 130 degrees. And that's it for today. So ladies, after you finish your puzzle, please make sure you do your delta math. I believe it's only four questions. If you have any questions, please email myself or Ms. Colorindo. Have a great day, ladies.